have you seen from that already and like how exciting is that for you to have that kind of collaboration? I mean, I welcome it. I mean, all, all of the great players and all of the great teams I've been, been around and been a part of, it's like, that's that's a common theme. Like, uh, whether it was me playing in Detroit and, O four with Chauncey, you know, giving suggestions and talking, and Ben Wallace and Steve and everybody, and all the way up to the championship with Milwaukee, and Giannis being vocal, Chris Middleton being like a Tom Brady almost. So that's that's common. Like you can't, as a coach, you have to welcome them because what they do is it means they're willing to hold themselves accountable. If they suggest something and you go, okay, you meet them halfway, and yeah, well, okay, we want you want to do it like this, let's do it. So now beautiful thing for a coach is now they got to make it work so it's been great man I, I welcome it though I, I think that's helped it's very helpful back to Kendrick for a second you know, talking a little bit on DJ day he said it was it was tough last year you know you don't play one minute so he talked to other players who went through long-term injuries uh, how, how kind of important and maybe even cool is that for him that he's out there you know, kind of getting some starting run right now well I told him man I'm early on in the summertime and I saw him in here grinding away you know working on his body working on his agility, um, just in here constantly, daily, um, getting back accustomed to being on the floor, getting his rhythm back. I told him he's huge. It's almost like he's a new player. He's a free agent for us. So um, yeah, I told him he's going to be a big part of what I'm trying to do. And, uh, you know, he's embraced it. And you can tell by his play thus far. I know it's early, but he's drawn already, like, from all those greats that you mentioned, like, establish himself. He's even different. Or? Oh, yeah. yeah. He's, he's done that long before I got signed on to do this job. I mean, it, it's seeing it from afar. Like I said, having played against him, having competed against him in Atlanta all those years and when he was in Cleveland. And, uh, you know, it, it's you expect that from him. You know, he's, he's a high, 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 high IQ basketball player and, and, and he's still able to get it done at a very high level. So it's, it's beautiful to be a part of, to be able to coach. Yeah, it's just uh, the, the next one for me. I mean, uh, it's been fun. You know, getting back on the floor, getting back with the unit, and uh, just working on having I'm um, trying to get better every day, stack the days, keep on stacking them. And, uh, yeah. Can you talk about AD and how he uh, might have bounced back to you? How's he with you? Uh, great. Shape. And uh, obviously now we're in like tip top regular season playoff shape, but you know everyone's in the best shape they can be in, you know, at this point. So it's great to see him in. Speak, your, speak for yourself on tip top shape, but uh, <clears throat> do, do you do you've been a point guard on this team? You've been a center by definition. Do you have any idea what your what your role is gonna be with this group yet? Or is that still kind of to be determined by the flow of what the um, for me, I'm just a ball player, so, you know, you put me on the floor, I can make anything happen. You know, I don't have to really have a position. You know, if it calls for me having to handle the ball a little bit more, um, I can do that. If it calls for me being a screen setter, I can do that. If it rolling. If it calls for me being on the wing and running, I can do that. So, um, more of a positionless type of basketball player, so, you know, you put me on the floor, I can make anything happen. Does that fit with what Darvin's kind of asking of you guys to be positionless and interchangeable? Is that, is I fit with any coach. You mentioned on media day that your goal would be uh, personally to be on the court as much as possible, be available for your team. Darvin's spoken about uh, accountability and something that he wants to bring uh, to this group in the spirit of that, other than wanting to be on the court more than you were last year. Is there anything you learned from last year that you could apply to this year to, to hopefully have a better team success? Um, I mean, last year was last year and we're done with, so it's about how much work we can put in on a day to day basis this year and get better. I don't think it doesn't matter how long you play this game. The day you think you can stop learning, the day you start going back. So, you know, I'm always trying to figure out ways I can get better and learn from coaches, new teammates, and life in general. So, every day is a learning experience for me. And I love it. I love it being a part of this, uh, this new coaching system, this new coaching style, new head coach. And, group of coaches that came in, so it's fun. Brian, you're 20, obviously, endless institutional knowledge. How much are you interested in embracing the role of being like a player coach? I mean, I've always been that. I've always tried to be an extension for my head coach, to be able to take his commands and being on the floor and be able to just, you know, you know use those commands and cadence and, uh, you know, send it to my uh, to my players on the floor. You know, you kind of have that in some 
you know, most NFL teams, like a middle linebacker, it's kind of a, an extension from the coach. Um, obviously, the, the quarterback as well. So um, I've always tried to be that, you know, be able to just, just have one singular, um, you know, goal in mind from the head coach to myself to the players. Um, I think we get the most out of it. LeBron. What your plan is for, for Monday or, or for games in terms of preseason? How many would like to play? Uh, more than I played last year. We didn't play last year. More than I played last year. LeBron, you mentioned on the telecast and there's some tweets to the guy. Uh, if so, what word does and what do you expect? Just a lifestyle. Do? Just a lifestyle. What what, does? What's your expectation of what that will be for this season? Um, I don't know. I mean, um, but I think um, being, first of all, being black and, and understanding how you know, heart rate and blood pressure things run in my family, living a healthy lifestyle is very important. You know, to not only myself, but you know, showing it to the kids and the people all around. So, you know, that can translate to the game, cool, but it's more about life. LeBron, going back a little bit, um, you know, what was it like to learn? The NBA was going to honor Bill Russell by retiring his jersey number. What are you? What are your thoughts on being one of the last players to wear number six? And what sort of intentions with that number? Um, it wasn't a shock. I mean, it's what should have happened. Um, the man meant so much to the game, not only to the Boston Celtics, but to the NBA in general, and also off the floor as well. What he contributed, um, you know, to the black community. You know, his activism. You know, his speaking, his mind. You know, everything he meant to the game. Um, you know, and it was always that treat. Um, you know, seeing him at games, or, you know, when I had an opportunity to win championships, seeing him up on the panel with me, uh, giving me the Bill Russell Award was one of the most delightful moments of my, my career, just because I know how much he meant to the game and to the history. So, uh, it was pretty cool. And for me to continue to live on his legacy wearing six this year, um, you know, I think it's, uh, you know, continue to honor his legacy. LeBron, 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 LeBron is kind of what I'm interested about, uh, basically just learning to play with a guy like Steph and how he's getting in his way at first. And then once he figured out, oh, he's, Steph's looking for the double team already. So he has to kind of anticipate that. Do you see guys uh, do that? Is it, is it more of just some guys have that IQ, some don't? How do you deal with that? Well, you, you deal with it by getting on the floor and getting in the game and logging minutes. Um, just like Juan said, it, it, took him a, it took him a little time early on, you know, and then you start getting more and more into the game. You start watching more and more film, more and more practices and things like that nature. And it starts to come, you know, uh, you know, with time. So I think that will continue to happen with the new guys that we have. LeBron, I wanted to ask you about the, uh, the LeBron 20s. You know, low top, so much history. You got the breads on right now. You know, your son's being a part. You played in the Drew League with him. What is the significance behind that shoe? Already so much history with it. Uh, uh, the significance of this shoe is the diamond collection. It's my 20th. There's not many guys have ever been able to say they had 20 signature shoes. And uh, for me to be a part of that, uh, that you know, it's pretty cool. Um, but this shoe was made for the next generation. And that was with Bronny and Bryce in mind. You know, understanding, you know, the basketball player of the day and the, and, and the people of today, like the lower shooter, like the ones lower to the floor, and like the feel a, bit, a little bit more lighter. So, you know, I listen to the athletes. And I got two of them in my household, so that was pretty neat. Um, so he was able to bring this to uh, I listen to what they wanted to say and listen. They actually sat in some of the meetings with me, and uh, we all listened to them and we made it happen. LeBron, third training camp with AD. Do you get any sense as you're approaching this with any kind of different attitude, any chip on the shoulder that you can tell us the last couple of years? Where did he tell you guys? Have you seen anything? There it is. There it is. Uh, because it's the singular most grass, uh, fastest growing sport in America right now. You know, um, you know, so I'm a smart man, I'm a smart businessman, and uh, I mean, that's very smart. Uh, but uh, we got a great, we got a great group to be able to put that team together. Um, you know, and it's, it's actually a really, really cool sport. Uh, I have a home in, in, in Cabo, and we actually have a pickleball uh, uh, court there. So we actually play a lot during the offseason. It's pretty fun. And uh, I think a lot of people enjoy it. A friend of mine said, uh, he's uh, around my age, and he said he went to a pickleball place one time, and there was like some six-year-old man there, and he thought he was going to show up and just dominate him, and he got his ass kicked, and that was, that was hilarious. So, you know, uh, you know, I think it's pretty cool. Are Everybody you good? Uh, am I good at what? You're good at everything. <laughs> <laughs> I question you, man. You know me, man. 
I can finesse too. That's why I got no low cuts now. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> okay. What's up with golf? Man, anyway, man. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Shit, ain't nothing wrong with it. My father-in-law's 77. He's the best thing in the world, so I ain't tripping. <laughs>